Of the important members of the Delhi Shilpi Chakra, Kamal Krishna was one of them who established himself as an artist of repute nationally. He is considered to be one of those pioneering modernist artists who developed the genre of landscape for its own scape, for its own sake in the tradition of the Western modernists. He was born in pre-partition Punjab, but he studied at the Calcutta School of Art. At a young age, he associated himself with a Tibetan monk by name Gendul Chopanhel. And this monk seemed to have made a deep impression on his intellectuality as well as on his sensibility. Chopanhel was a rebel monk and he proved to be an inspiration for many other Tibetans, including those who were in exile. His intellectual restlessness made him reject some of the ancient traditions of old Tibet. With his close associations with this monk, Kaval Krishna began to look at the issues that were cultural, social and political because these were the issues that were also close to the heart of the Tibetan monk. In engaging with them, he was able to get a deeper insight about life in general and Kaval Krishna is considered to be one of those artists who called himself as a wandering gypsy. In his art, it was his watercolors that was excellent in technique, in his facility of handling the medium, the spontaneity with which he worked, and the freshness of the landscapes and the mountainscapes that he brought to his works. That was the most important aspects of Kamal Krishna's uh, paintings, especially the watercolors. He, uh, his love for life made him a wanderer. He had a wandering lust to the extent that after 1941, marrying Devyani Krishna, who was also another artist, both of them traveled across the length and breadth of the land, from Khyber to Bengal and from Kashmir to Chennai. Looking at Kaval Krishna's watercolor paintings, particularly his landscapes and the mountainscapes, he was inspired deeply by the play of light and shade, light and dark, as well as that of the space or the ambit which surrounded all the forms in nature. Looking at nature, he compared it metaphorically to his inner self. And that inner space or the inner self, he considered it as a pilgrim and the outer environment as nature. So it was literally a pilgrim's voyage in nature. Nature seems to have fascinated Kaval Krishna considerably. He found it enigmatic, mysterious, and in his paintings, he elevated it to be almost spiritual in character. Uh, his landscapes, particularly the mountains that he painted, the Himalayan mountains, which he painted at Lhasa, at Bhutan, Sikkim, and many other places in North India, they are manifested with an inner energy. It has an enigmatic quality, and as already mentioned, very mysterious in character, and these aspects of the mountains held a greater fascination for Kaval Krishna and he was able to establish this or manifest it through his watercolors with subtle tones and the complexities of forms almost sometimes bordering on the abstract. A look at Kaval Krishna's watercolors or that of the landscapes that he has rendered are almost impressionistic in character. He was not interested in creating romantic pastoral ones, but rather he wanted to capture the very essence, you know, what was beyond the truth of nature that he seems to have understood and which he wanted to bring into his works. So this uh, enigmatism, this complexity of nature, he was able to reduce it in a very simplistic manner and bring it to his works. And this is perhaps one of the reasons that why his works are also very impressionistic, 
because he captures the very essence as he perceptually noticed it. Empirically, he experienced it. Perceptually, he interpreted it the way he wanted to and that is how he projected the mountain landscapes particularly that he painted with great ease and with great facility. An extremely a skilled artist, very intelligent and uh, very sensitive to nature, he was able to make a considerable contribution towards the development of modernist art in India, particularly in the late 50s. Another important artist who seems to have uh, provided uh, deep reflection on the creation of Delhi Shilpi Chakra was Pran Nath Mago. He was born in Rawalpindi, but he lived his life in Lahore. And when he had to come away to India post partition, uh, sorry, to Delhi post partition, he said that he carried with him the memories of Lahore, which he said was not a city, but rather a tradition and culture. And he found it very difficult to forget that. Pran Nath Mago also taught uh, in the art department of Delhi Polytechnic and also as an art teacher in various other institutions. And uh, being a founder member of Delhi Shilpi Chakra, his contribution towards this organization was, of course, very much immense. He is one of those artists who had to come away like Kaval Krishna post-partition and he established himself at Delhi. A glance at uh, Margot's works very clearly establishes that for him, the pain, the suffering, the despair and the bloodshed that he seems to have witnessed of the partition, he projected it in a very candid manner and in a very sensitive manner and without any partiality. In his style, he was deeply impressed by the works of post-impressionists, particularly Van Gogh and his expressionist use of the brush strokes. And of course, Indian miniature tradi tradition with its compositional structure that remains at the heart of his works. Some of the early works of uh, Margot, which are reflective of the post-partition tragedy, shows the mourners who are subtle, who are sitting rather huddled together. Their faces are not shown, and uh, it is painted in a very expressionistic manner, particularly the strokes in the background, which has echoes of Van Gogh. And it, was, and it is through these textured strokes that he was able to create a sense of uh, empathy with the mourners. And the question he asks is that who is going to actually help them get over the tragedy that they have suffered. He also painted the farewell in which a number of young soldiers from Punjab were recruited to fight during the Second World War. And many of them, of course, lost their lives at the foreign borders. His uh, forms are also very sturdy, well-defined, solid. And that solidity of his figures is also reflective of his approach to life and thinking. He had the clarity of mind. He knew exactly what he wanted to paint. And uh, this, is very made, this is made manifest in his compositional structure which is well-defined, having a clarity, at the same time also included details in the right places. So uh, his works basically uh, makes an impact in the way he was able to think clearly, use his colors in the way he wanted to use it, either subtly or in uh, contrast, dynamic contrast, to bring out the emotions and sentiments. So for Margot, his artistic expression was both emotional, also nostalgia of having lived in a city of Lahore, but at the same time, he adopts to his new city of Delhi and then moves on in his works to create many more important compositions.